Module scripts are one of the most useful tools to developers on Roblox. A module script's main purpose is to allow you to easily share functions and other code between scripts. Now look, if you're brand new to Roblox scripting or you went onto the documentation page of what a module script is and you feel extremely confused, don't worry. Their description of a module script is, a module script is a type of Lua source container that runs once and must return exactly one value. This value is then returned by a call to require given the module script as the only argument. Module scripts run once and only once per Lua environment and return the exact same value for subsequent calls to require. Even after developing on Roblox for over a year and actually knowing what a module script is, that description already scares me. So rather than going through the definition of what a module script is, let's actually hop into Studio so I can show you. Let's go into our starter player and inside of our starter player scripts and add a brand new module script to this. Whenever you create a new module script and open it up, the default contents of the module script will be a variable called module, and that's just gonna be set to an empty table. And at the bottom of the script, there will be a return statement, which returns the module variable. This is just one similarity that every single module script will literally have. You're always going to need to return a value from a module script, otherwise your module script won't work. Now, the module variable, the name of this doesn't actually matter. You can change it to whatever you want to, or you could just leave it as module. If we wanted to, we could change it to test. We just have to make sure that we're returning this variable as well, just like that. Or, like I said, you can just leave it as module and it doesn't matter at all. It's just personal preference. Now, let's go back into our start player scripts and add a new local script to this so that we we can actually require or start using our module script. Let's also rename our module script to test. So now we'll create a variable inside of our local script called test as well. And we're gonna set that equal to require script dot parent and now because of our setup we're gonna have to use wait for child and we're gonna get test the module script so now inside of this local script we're actually able to use things from our module script inside of here the thing is though is that our module script doesn't actually have anything inside of it for us to use so let's start adding some things to this for instance we could add a variable to this which all scripts could access all we have to do is say module dot and now we have to list our variable name and let's just say players and we'll just set that to a blank table for now then we can go back inside of our local script and we could say test and then when we put a period, we can see players is automatically filled in and it says the type that it actually is as well, which is a table. So if we wanted to, we could say test.players equals and then just change this to any value we want to. If we wanted to change it to 10, we could. What if we wanted to use a function? Well, let's go inside of our module and we can add a function. All we have to do is say function module dot and now the name of the function as well. And we'll just name this test and we could specify any parameters that it takes, but we won't include any in this. And now the functionality of this function, it'll just print true anytime it's called. So then we can go back inside of our local script and we can say test.test .test and call that function just like that. Now in a second, we'll start up our game and see this in action. But first, before we change the player's value, let's go ahead and just print test.players and we'll also print it again after we change the value as well. This is just so we can see the player's value before and after we change it to make sure that it did update and make sure that it was different before. So now we can go ahead and start up our game. And now looking in the output, ignoring that error right there, we can see the client first printed out the table, then we changed the value to 10 and then also we can see that the module script printed out true because we called this test function right here. I just hopped into my simulator game, which I've made a series on to further showcase some module script examples to you guys as well. Now, inside of my server script service, I have a folder called utils, which just has a bunch of module scripts inside of it. A really simple module script would be the utils module script that I have right here. Inside of here, we can see that this is the basic default module variable that is first created whenever we created the script because that's equal to a table. And then we can see all the functions are named, utils dot, and then the actual name of the function. And at the end, we can see that we're returning this variable as well. Another module script that would be good to look at is my rewards module. This module handles how players are rewarded every single time in our game. Now, if we search through all of my scripts to see every single time I've used this module and this specific pet function, we can see that it's actually being used in two different scripts, the egg script right here, and also the trade script that I have as well. Now, those are just examples of module scripts that I've made myself in the past. Module scripts can also be other people's work as well. If we look inside of my replicated storage inside of my libs folder, we can see that there's actually this format number module script right here and this isn't actually my code at all you can see right here when I open up the module script there's actually a large comment up here which was put in here by the creator to tell us their licensing and everything else like that so basically what this is is somebody created their own code and then published it for a bunch of other people to use themselves so for example this person made a really nice and simple easy to use module script which allows me to easily format my numbers in a specific way that I want to rather than coding all of that myself I simply downloaded their module script put it in my game 
game and then just required it and used it, which was super simple and easy. So modules don't only allow you to share your own code with other scripts, they also allow you to share other people's code with your scripts as well. Another thing that I use module scripts for, which isn't their intended purpose, but it's for organization. If we see inside of my pet inventory GUI, I have this module script named handler. Now everything inside this module isn't actually shared amongst multiple scripts. It's actually all used with inside of this manager script right here. But the reason that I create a module is because I like to use them to organize my code as well. If we see my manager script right here, this is already 126 lines. And yes, I could have included all of the stuff from this script inside of there as well. But sometimes I like to split my code up and break them into chunks and using module scripts allows me to easily organize them and do this. Now, going back to the definition of what a module script is, I felt like it was a good idea to explain two really useful things. The first thing we'll cover is how a module script only runs one time. So what we mean by this is let's just say, for instance, inside of my module script right here, I just print out 10. Then we go back inside of our local script and let's just delete all this code right here. We don't need it. Now, whenever we start up our game, we should see 10 has been printed out from the test module right here because we called require on it. And the first time that we require a module script, that script will run whatever code is inside of it. So for instance, if we're calling a function inside of here, that function is going to run the first time that this module script is loaded. Now we can further our test by requiring this two times. So we can just go ahead and copy that require statement and then require it once again. Let's just say task dot wait one so that we wait one second, print require second. So now we'll require the script, then we'll wait one second and then we'll print this out and then require it once again. So we can start up our game and test this out. And now we see 10 has been printed from the module script. And then we can also see the require second has been printed, but 10 has not been printed a second time. The reason that 10 has not been printed a second time is because this specific code is only going to run the first time that this module script is required. So you could require this module script from 10 different scripts and only one time will this print 10 ever run. So hopefully you now understand what they mean by these module scripts will only run one time. Now, another bit of information that's really useful is that if one module script is requiring another module script, that same module script cannot also require the module script that is requiring it. Now that might sound confusing, but don't worry, I'll explain what I mean. So let's take, for instance, our rewards module and our stats module right here. If we look inside of our rewards module, we can actually see that we're requiring this stats module right here. So yes, module scripts are able to require other module scripts. That's completely fine. But if rewards is requiring stats, and now inside of here, we required the rewards module, this wouldn't work because both modules are requiring each other at that point. So rewards is able to require stats, but stats would not be then allowed to require rewards. Rewards could also require utils, but then utils would not be able to require rewards. Otherwise, the script would break. Now, this is actually referred to as a circular dependency. When one thing requires another thing, and that thing actually requires the thing that's requiring it, that's when you have a circle dependency going on, and that will prevent your script from loading. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that module scripts also offer the ability to use object-oriented programming. Now, this is a little bit more of an advanced topic and requires a lot more explanation. I actually have a video on this. If you want to learn more about object-oriented programming, you guys can go ahead and check that out, but that's also another usage of module scripts as well. With that all being said, hopefully you guys are now familiar with module scripts, and I really encourage you guys to start using these because they are so useful. If you guys did enjoy the video or it did help you guys out or you learned something new, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified and want to upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to a ton of scripts from my past videos. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.